Hi gang, I'm back again with another review, and this time out it is Mage Wars Academy from Arcane Wonders. And stay tuned to the end of the review because you'll find out how you can score yourself a free copy of Mage Wars Academy. But enough of that, let's take a look to see what we've got when we take everything outside the box. As previously mentioned, this is Mage Wars Academy from Arcane Wonders, and it's designed by Brian Pope. This is the core set, the Beastmaster vs. Wizard, and this is a standalone game. I'll be the first to point out, I don't have any experience with Mage Wars or Mage Wars Arena, and if I remember correctly, the original Mage Wars came out at Origins in 2012. Yet, I have not had an opportunity to play the game or actually really chat with anybody at Arcane Wonders at any of the conventions previously, but I was always interested in the game because I had heard a lot of good things about it. We see it's got the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence, which I don't know if that matters to you or not, but it does have the seal. Taking a flip at the back real quickly, this is a two-player game. It's for ages 14 and up, and it can be played in 30 minutes or less. What the game is, it's two dueling mages. And from my understanding, this is kind of a light version of Mage Wars Arena. And this is more of an introduction to the game line. And the mages themselves are not as powerful as you may find in the Arena game. This is a pretty hefty box, I have to admit. Uh, it's not a huge box, but it's got some serious heft to it. So let's see what we've got inside. We've got the rule book and codex, and we'll take a look at that in just a couple moments. We've got some counters. Looks like we've got some tokens here. Looks like some spell effects. I understand that you'll track your mana and damage on these little wheels and I'm sure there's probably a little connector inside to be able to put that together. So we've got that there. We've got more. I believe these are damage indicators. Whoa! 20! That's a pretty solid hit, I would think. And then we've got another tracker down here. The game also comes with spell books. And these spell books are where each player will put their spell cards that they're utilizing. So we've got this one there. I believe that's going to be the wizard because this looks like this would be for the Beast Master. Every time I think of that, I keep thinking of that old movie from the 80s. What a horrible flick that was. But this would be the Beastmaster Spellbook. And then we've got some decks of cards as well. I understand that there's a promo uh, deck or some promo cards that are available in this edition too. I saw it on the front of the box. So this looks like this is the Wizard deck. And this is the Beastmaster deck. Got some custom dice. Ah, there are the little connectors I see, and a 12-sided die. So let's take a quick look at these decks of cards. There's the Wizard, here is the Beastmaster, and here is the big old deck of other cards, too. Let's just begin by taking a look at the Beastmaster. So this is the representation of the Beastmaster, and this is the Beastmaster's card. And the Emerald Elk Stave. From my understanding, there are four different types of cards, or I guess spells we would say, that uh, each of the mages can cast. There's equipment. So I see we've got all the different equipment here. There are creatures. And as you can see, the artwork's 
really nice. That's pretty cool. Hey, that's not very scary. What is that? It's like just a little, uh, like, uh, mongoose or something. It's Ricky Dicky Tavi. A fairy, hounds. Then we've got enchantments, which no doubt you would be casting onto your creatures or possibly the mage himself. Wolf Fury. And then incantations. And attack. Hmm. Well, okay, maybe there's five different cards. So there we have what's in the Beastmaster deck. Then we have the Wizard deck. Take a look here. There's the Wizard. Once again, some equipment. And creatures. The mana worm. A cockatrice. And then the enchantments. Incantations. And more attack cards. I'm going to take a wild guess that these two decks here might include the cards that are recommended to start the game with or to learn the game with. And then we have a whole hunkin' lot of other cards. Creatures, equipment. You can use the cards in Mage Wars Academy in Mage Wars Arena. So you can cross over from this game to Arena. More creatures. Looks like just some extras of some that we've already seen. And then some that we have not. Very cool. All right, so quite a few of these. I'm not sure which might be the promo cards or not. And I'm going to take a stab. You could probably pick up the promo cards in this edition. This is the first print run. And maybe they're available through Arcane Wonders or possibly even the Board Game Geek web store. There we have that. So we've got all these cards here. And then we have the rule book. And it's not real long. Lavishly illustrated, talking about the components, how your game table should set up. Yeah, there are suggested spell books, so for the Beast Master and the Wizard. It's going to show a breakdown of the card. Still talking about setup, then talking about the spell cards. The game round and the various phases. Creature actions, casting spells, the different spell types. Okay, so we've got creatures, equipment, enchantments, incarnations, and attacks. So there are five different spell types. Some additional rules for customizing your spell book. Playing multiplayer games, a free-for-all game, team games, and then a codex, which is pretty much a glossary of the different terms that are being used. Altogether, about 21 pages of rules. So that's what's inside Mage Wars Academy. Now, let's talk about how does the game play? To understand how to play Mage Wars Academy, we have to have a bit of an understanding about the cards themselves. So I've laid a few of them out. First off, I'm going to begin with the Beastmaster, and this is just the representation of the mage that you'll have on the table. So just like creatures that you'll bring out, you're going to have a card for the Beastmaster himself. So we'll put that right back there. And then we're going to actually take a look at the Beastmaster card. 
Once again, right there, it tells us it's a Beastmaster. He's a creature because even the mages are considered creatures. Wood Elf, and he has 40 spell points. That comes into play as far as creating a custom spell book. The life points that he has available because as you're dueling, your main goal of the game is to reduce the opponent's mage to zero life. Armor is zero. Channeling is how much mana the Beast Master is able to channel each round. So, and I'll show you that in just a moment, but he channels seven and he begins with zero mana. The wizard starts with three mana. Then it shows the training and the Beast Master is trained in nature magic. And also of note, any fire spells cost triple spell points. This is something that you go into when you're creating your custom spell book. The Beastmaster also has a special ability once per round. If the Beastmaster summons a level 1 animal creature, he may also pay 1 mana to have it enter play active rather than inactive. And you would normally... I'm just going to move these out of the way because we're going to take a look at each of the different kinds of spells in just a second. So you would place the Beastmaster card here on the table. This is the tracker. So you're going to track the mana as well as the damage to the mage. So as far as let's say the Beast Master as the example, in the reset phase you would be channeling the mana. So at seven, so you would have the seven. One thing that's different about Mage Wars as opposed to say Magic the Gathering, the mana doesn't dissipate at the end of the round. So you can carry mana over and keep kind of charging the battery of your mage. If you're not casting spells, that is. And then on this side we've got the damage tracker. It does go to 20. As we saw, the Beastmaster has 24 life. So if you're playing the Beastmaster and you're at 21 damage, you're going to have to kind of maybe use a token a damage token to kind of indicate that, just keeping in mind that he has 24 life. So I'll put that off to the side here. As far as the spells, let's start off with the equipment. And the spell cards are all pretty much set up the same way. In this corner here, we have the point total for mana to cast that spell. So this would cost four mana. That's what you target, the mage. So this is a piece of equipment that is going to be cast for the mage to use. You also see this little indicator here. That means that's a quick action. And I'll get to that in just a second when we talk about actual gameplay. This shows that up here it's the equipment. It's a weapon. It is nature magic. It is a level one spell. Once again, something you worry about when you're getting into the spellbook creation. It shows that once this is cast, this weapon can be used as a quick action. It's a melee attack, and you're going to roll three dice. And it also has a special ability. So you're going to have the flavor text will tell you what special ability or effects that that spell will have. So that's the equipment. Then we have the Incantation, which is a one-shot spell showing that this cost is X, and it'll explain down here what that X represents. It's a full-time action. It's not a quick action. Shows the School of Magic. It's Water Magic, Level 1. And then talks about that down there. We've got the attack spell. It's kind of a one and done. And I do have to apologize. It is frigidly cold in the Chicago area today. And that is the furnace kicking on. And it shows that this is, once again, this is a quick action. The target is going to be a creature or conjuration. Shows this is a ranged attack. Lightning. 
three dice, and then it could have a special effect as well. And that's what the 12-sided die that's included in the game is for. And then we have a creature, which these are a little bit different because once these come into play, they're going to stay in play until they've been destroyed. This is the Raja Jungle's Talon. Costs 11 mana to cast. Once again, it's not a quick action. It shows a zone, and in Mage Wars Arena, there's zones on the table. In Mage Wars Academy, there are no zones, so everything is right in front of you. This is a creature, animal, cat, nature magic, level 3, has one armor, so you'll see if any of the creatures have armor or special defensive abilities. Has 11 life. Its attack is a quick action. Four dice. Has a special ability of piercing. It's legendary, so that means you can only have one of these creatures on the table at any one time. And it's also elusive, which is a special ability allows you to disregard any creature that's guarded. Then finally we have an enchantment, and the enchantments are actually cast on creatures. And you'll see there's two numbers here. So the two mana is to cast it, and when you would cast it, you're actually going to put it with the creature. Say for an example, you were casting it on the Raja. And your opponent's not going to know what is that enchantment. To actually activate it, it costs you another one mana. It's nature magic, and then it talks about what are the special effects of the card itself. So there are five different types of spells. The creatures, the enchantments, the attacks, incantations, and equipment. To get an idea how Mage Wars Academy plays, and of course your, your, your opponent would be set up and everything else over here, so we don't have a whole lot of space to utilize to keep it in frame. As far as the way the game is set up, there are three phases to every round. Each round, there's a reset phase, an upkeep phase, and an action phase. And it's funny, the action phase really is where all the action takes place, because in the reset phase, all you're going to do is you'll have initiative. One player will begin the game with initiative. That means they get to go first. Well, on the following rounds, the initiative's going to pass back and forth. So you're going to pass the initiative. You're going to reset your creatures. This shows that creature is active. Turning it 90 degrees or 45 degrees or tapping it as is a common phrase. And I'm sorry, Wizards of the Coast can't sue me because this isn't my game. I'm just saying you can tap. And you know what? Maybe I meant that. Hey, there you go. I'm tapping. So call off the lawyers. Regardless, however you decide that you're going to indicate that you've used your creature you're going to show that it's inactive. In the reset, you're going to straighten them back out so it will show that it's active. You're also going to flip markers. Mainly, the main marker you're flipping is this quick action token that you can put right there on your mage. So the reality is Every one of your creatures gets to take an action in the action phase. But the mages have a quick action, so they could conceivably cast two spells in one turn. So simply, if you've used the quick action, you flip it over to used, and in the reset, you're going to flip it back. You're going to channel the mana. So let's say we're starting off, well, there's seven. Bingo. Because we already know the Beastmaster channels 
seven mana per turn. That's the reset phase. Pretty simple, very easy to do. And in Academy, the first two rounds, you cannot attack your opponent. So you're, you're basically ramping up because you're student mages. So in your first two rounds, you would be channeling mana. Now, of course, you could be casting spells to bring things out onto the table, like creatures or equipment or enchantments on creatures, what have you. It's just you cannot attack your opponent in the first two rounds of the game. Second phase is the upkeep phase. This is really, really simple. The upkeep phase is anything that has a special effect going on, you take care of it then. So some creatures can regenerate, and you would use that special ability in that phase. Pretty simple. You don't do a whole lot in the upkeep phase. Then we have the action phase, and that's where all the good stuff takes place, because that's when you're casting spells, you're attacking with creatures, so on and so forth. So as I mentioned, in the action phase, every one of your creatures, and remember, your mage is a creature, can take an action. Now that action may be casting a spell or attacking your opponent or deciding that you're going to use your creature to guard and I'll mention why that's important in just a moment. But in essence, in the action phase, the creatures are all getting to take an action. And this goes back and forth. So unlike Magic the Gathering, where normally one player is doing everything in their turn, and of course, obviously, there are interrupts and things like that that come into play in Magic. In Mage Wars Academy, it's going to go back and forth. So let's say, okay, well, I attack with, with the Raja. Okay, well, we resolve that, and then my opponent would get to use an action from one of their creatures. So there's a really nice back and forth, and you want to sit there and you're going to figure out ways to time things, because keep in mind, you could be sitting there attacking with creatures, not doing anything with your mage yet, and then suddenly start casting spells whenever you would want, whenever you would activate your mage. Another thing to keep in mind, too, is with the quick action, even if your mage is inactive, you can still use the quick action. So very cool there. As far as attacking, so let's say you've, we've got some creatures out here. It's important to keep in mind, unlike Magic the Gathering, your mage is out there in the midst of the battle itself. So your mage can easily be targeted by your opponent. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you have creatures who are on guard. And what that means is that if your opponent attacks, they have to attack the creature who's on guard first. Unless it's a ranged attack. Also, keep in mind, and this is a perfect example here, if we take a look and we do see Raja has the quick action symbol here for its attack. If you have a creature that's on guard, and gets attacked, if the creature isn't destroyed by the attack, they get a counterattack. Once a creature has been attacked, the guard comes off. So as far as the attacks, the attacker declares their attack. So they say, okay, I'm going to use this creature to attack that creature then the defender gets an opportunity to use defense to avoid the attack. Some creatures actually have a symbol, it's a shield, and a number on it. And if they roll that number or higher on the 12-sided die, then they've actually, 
evaded that attack, so the attack does not happen. They can only do that once unless they have a little infinity symbol. But you won't see a lot of the creatures that have defense, but they do exist. So it's possible for some of the creatures to be able to avoid an attack. Then the attacker's are going to roll dice. So as we saw, the Raja has four dice to attack. Let's just roll. <laughs> that was pretty lousy. So that would be two hits on, let's say, the Raj was attacking. So that would be two hits. If you see a number symbol, just like this, that's how much damage that that attack has made. If you see the starburst, that means it's kind of like a critical hit. So without the starburst, armor can absorb these hits. So as an example, real quickly, if I rolled one and the Raj was the subject of the attack, he's got armor of one. Well, guess what? I didn't do anything. Now, if it was a one like that, then yes, he would take damage. And there are damage tokens in the game of various values. And we'll say that was one point, and we will pop that on there. Something also different with Mage Wars, as opposed to Magic the Gathering, the creatures don't heal at the end of each round. So the damage does build up. So you can keep plinking away and plinking away and plinking away at bigger monsters to be able to finally eliminate them from the table. I know there are some people who have an issue where in magic, you know, sometimes you get these huge behemoths out on the table and it's, n it's nigh impossible to kill them. In a nutshell, really, that's all that's involved in playing Mage Wars. You're just gonna take turns going back and forth till every one of the creatures has had an action. Then you're gonna go and move on to the next step, or I should say next round. All in all, very easy to figure out. The rules aren't that involved. Yes, the creatures all have, not all of them, but a lot of them have special abilities. You have the codex, you can take a look to see exactly what that means. For an example, elusive just means if the Raja attacks, it can ignore guards. So, in effect, the Raja can attack any creature that it wants. The reality is it'll take 15 minutes tops to really figure out how to play the game. You're going to want to get a couple of games under your belt before you really have a complete grasp on everything. But there aren't all the fiddly little timing sequences and things like that that you find in Magic. So that's how you play Mage Wars Academy. You might be wondering, what are my thoughts overall? We've taken everything outside the box of Mage Wars Academy and we've taken a look to see how it plays. Now you're probably wondering, well, Jeff, what do you think of Mage Wars Academy? And I'll be very, very honest. It does carry the Dice Tower seal of excellence, and many people believe the Dice Tower and the Gaming Gang are direct competitors. So I, unfortunately, can't recommend buying Mage Wars Academy. Sorry. Thanks for watching the review. I'm kidding. Actually, I really enjoyed playing Mage Wars Academy. There's a lot going for it. And if you're interested in the whole concept of dueling wizards and summoning creatures and casting spells, you're going to dig it too. Even fans of Magic the Gathering are going to find a lot to like about this game. And I'm going to say a lot of people are probably wondering, well, what's the difference between Magic the Gathering and Mage Wars? Is Mage Wars better? Is Magic the Gathering better? To be truthful, 
you have to realize there are two different games. Magic the Gathering and Mage Wars, or Mage Wars Academy, are two different beasts. Or, in this case, I guess we would say Beast Master? Regardless, if you like Magic the Gathering, you're going to like Mage Wars. If you don't like Magic the Gathering, you're probably still going to like Mage Wars, because it's not as in-depth as far as some of the little niggling rule details. I know with Magic the Gathering, a lot of times people have uh, a bit of trouble with the timing mechanism, especially when uh, you're casting instant spells and they're stacking up and what resolves before another spell and so on and so forth. You don't have that problem here. I know some people don't dig the randomness of Magic the Gathering because you're drawing cards and I'll be the first to admit I've found myself with a handful of land cards without a spell to be able to cast. That doesn't happen with Mage Wars either. This isn't saying that Magic the Gathering is a bad game. I love Magic the Gathering. I think it's an awesome game. The design still holds up all these years later. But Magic the Gathering can also be a bit of a money sink, especially with new core sets coming out every year, and then new sets come out and boosters. And granted, yes, you don't have to go purchase anything other than a starter set for Magic the Gathering, but honestly, how many of us really do that? With Mage Wars Academy, all the spells are included in the one core set. I am going to point out there is a second core set coming out that has two other different mages in it, but you don't have to purchase it. You can get by just fine with what's in this box. I also like the fact that if you have Mage Wars Arena, you can take these cards and use them in your Mage Wars Arena games. Unfortunately, you can't do that vice versa, or I guess some of the cards you can't. I don't know. Regardless, I think Mage Wars Academy is an excellent game. That's why I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. This is certainly deserving to be on most gamers' shelves and in their collections, that's for sure. Now, if you watched the beginning of the video, you probably recall I mentioned you can score a free copy of Mage Wars Academy. I'll explain how. There is a little bit of a catch. If you're not familiar with TheGamingGang.com and you don't visit regularly, let's say maybe you only watch our videos, you'll have found out that from here on out, whenever we do a video review, we're also going to do a giveaway for whatever we were reviewing. Now this is only for game reviews. This doesn't go for sneak peeks or outside the box videos or Kickstarter previews or anything like that. Only video reviews. So you're wondering, how can I win? Simple enough. You need to support the gaming gang on Patreon. We have a Patreon page. We're not asking for continuing support for a dollar amount for each video that we do, just simply a dollar amount. And if you support the gaming gang for as little as a dollar a month, you're in the running for everything that we end up giving out. And we've got plenty of goodies on the horizon. Regardless, just wanted to float that out. If you don't want to win the game, you don't need to support us on Patreon. So. That's Mage Wars Academy from Arcane Wonders. Be sure to go pick it up and add it to your collection. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and don't forget to swing over to thegaminggang.com for all the latest in news and reviews and a whole lot of other stuff having to do with geek culture. And until next time, thanks for watching.